How you doing everyone? It's Kevin back with another video. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time now and uh, I'm going to get it done. This is a video for those of you out there that are not really familiar with the four and a half inch grinder. This little guy right here. And they have them in different brands. And the brand really depends on how much work you're going to do with it. If you're just a little uh, shop and you're just going to piddle around in there and you need a 4 inch grinder, don't go out and buy an expensive grinder. Just get a cheap one. It's going to do you fine as long as you're not using it much. The only thing after today, I show you what you can do with it, you're probably going to want a better one because you're going to be able to do a lot more with it. A lot of people don't realize how much you can do with a 4.5 inch grinder. These are They call them 4 inch grinders, this, they're actually 4.5 inches. They'll take a four and a half inch wheel and you can get them in different sizes too. You can get a, a four inch one or four and a half. But let me show you some of the different wheels that you can put on the front of this and I'll give you a little demonstration on how to cut and grind. Okay, I think I have a pretty good spread here on the table. And I'm going to start with the, the, the pieces or the wheels that you're probably not going to use as much. Uh, now this is a four inch uh, wheel here and this wheel is made for cutting concrete, ceramic, uh, metal. You can cut just about anything with this wheel. That's a four inch one. And then I got a four and a half inch one. So those two there, if you want to cut concrete, you want to cut uh, anything, pretty much anything, you can cut with that. And then here I have a grinding wheel for wood. This is to grind wood. So if you wanted to grind a corner off of a piece of wood or notch it out for something, you know, you could use this piece here. Now this one here is my chainsaw bit. Um, this one here is basically the same as running a chainsaw on your 4 inch grinder. You can sharpen it just like a chainsaw, and it cuts just like a chainsaw. Then you get to something you might be wanting to use a little more often, is a wire brush. You can get a wire brush, and all you have to do is pull your pieces off the end, and you can put this right on your 4.5 inch grinder. They have them like this, so you can wire brush straight down. Or if you want to use the side of it, you can use these. One thing I can tell you about these guys is you got to watch because these little wires want to fly off and they'll stick you all over. So it's best if, you, if you're using one of these, I like to use a leather uh, apron and that helps out a lot. Otherwise you'll be setting, you know, you'll, you'll go sit down somewhere and a little wire will poke you in the leg or something. So now, we're going to come over to these guys here because these are what you're really going to want this grinder for the most. This is, this is what you need. This is a grinding wheel. This right here. This will allow you to grind weld off. Uh, you can grind corners off of metal. You can do a lot with this. And I'm going to be showing you how to use these. This is one that just screws right on the end of your grinder. You can bolt it right on the end. And one nice thing about this one, you can do a flat surface. If you notice how cupped that is, your bolt will be up in here. And if you want to do a flat surface like an anvil top or something like that, I mean, whatever you want to grind, this will allow that to grind flush. Then you got your cutoff wheels. Now, a big thing with cutoff wheels. This wheel here came from Harbor Freight. I'm not going to say they're bad wheels because I use them all the time and they do work good for me. But there's ways to use these cheaper wheels. Anytime I'm getting a wheel, no matter what I'm going to use it on, whether it's mild steel, hard steel, or stainless steel, I make sure it says steel and stainless steel on it. Make sure it has that stainless steel. Stainless steel is very, very hard metal. And if it'll cut stainless steel, it'll cut that mild steel and tempered steel. That's the same way with these. You can buy a more expensive one, like the DeWalt. DeWalt's a good brand. 
Uh, but make sure it says metal stainless steel cutting. So you want to make sure it says stainless steel cutting on it. That's going to be a good wheel and it's going to last you a lot longer than just a mild steel wheel. Now we're going to come over to the tools. And this is something that you're going to lose, especially if there's different people in your shop working. You're going to lose these guys. Somebody's going to misplace it, set it down somewhere, and you're going to be all over the place looking for this tool. Hang it up. There's a hole in the other end for a reason. Hang it up. Put it where you got it from, and you'll come right back to it. And if you notice on this one, you have two different size pins. There's a smaller size here and a bigger size here. Some of your four inch grinder will take the small ones. Some of them will take the big ones. Some of them will take an Allen wrench. This tool here I picked up as a Harbor Freight. I really like this tool. It's adjustable. So no matter what one I get, I can twist this guy and make it bigger or smaller. And then I can tighten it up right where I want it and it works fine. I've never had no issues with it. it. Came from Harbor Freight. Cheap little tool. Nice to have. Got a handle on it and a hole in it so you can hang it up where it goes. There's so many times I went and got a grinder and then wanted to change the wheel and just can't find the tool. Keep your tools hung up. Matter of fact, keep all of your wheels hung up and you'll know exactly where they're at. So we're going to get to setting up these machines and uh, we're going to cut a piece of metal. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to cut a piece of metal. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get our machine set up with a cutting wheel. Right now we have a grinding wheel on there. And the reason why I'm going to do the cutting first with the same saw is because I want to show you there's a couple different ways to put this on. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your machine is unplugged. And you're going to look on the back of this machine, you're going to see a button right here, right there. So what you're going to do is put your thumb on that button, I'll do it this way, put your thumb on it and twist it. And you feel that lock down in there, listen, you can hear it, it locks right in place. And that's going to keep this wheel from spinning now when we go to take it off. So we're going to push our button down. And we're going to get our wrench, we're going to stick it on here, place it on something hard, and push down. So now, we need to look at this piece here we're taking off. I'm going to show you. This piece here, right here, you can see how it has a lip around there. Now when you put a grinder on there, when you put your grinding wheel on there, you put that lip right down inside there. It snaps into place. It's right there. You'll put that down on there and there's also a lip on this piece. So let's do it. Put your grinding wheel down on there. You see the lip. You want to make sure it's not, you don't want it off to the side. It's going to wobble like crazy. Make sure that lip, this lip right here, goes down on top of here when you're doing a grinding wheel. Now, if you're going to do a cutting wheel, it's a little different. So we're going to take this piece off. We're going to take this piece off. It's our grinding wheel. We're going to pick us up one of these DeWalt wheels. Now, we're going to put our wheel on. And it, I don't think it matters whether the letters are up. But it looks better. So we're going to make sure that is in that slot. You see that slot? See this piece right here? We want it to slide right down on top of there. And now, instead of putting this piece down, you can see it's got the lip on there. You see how that lip kind of comes out of that metal? We're going to put the other end down. And the reason why is because if you put it on this way, this wheel is so thin it's just going to slide around on there. It's not going to cut. So. Put the indention part up for your cutting wheel and go ahead and put it on there. Tighten it as tight as you can with your fingers. 
And then you're going to push your button on the bottom, just like we did before. Twist it so you know it's locked into place. Now this is what people do wrong. They sit there and they try to get it too tight. You don't have to make it that tight. Just snug it up. It'll be okay. If it seems to want to spin on there, we can tighten it up a little more, but that wheel is not going anywhere. So that's putting on the cutting wheel. So now I'm going to show you how to cut with that wheel. Okay, we're going to get ready to cut. And this is one of the biggest problems I see a lot of people do, and I've been known to do it myself. Get in a hurry and want to just sit here and cut that wheel just in your hands. And it's very hard to do, and you take a good chance on breaking your wheel, and you also may get something in your eye or anything, because it may explode. It's hard, because you don't have control over both pieces. Your arms want to move. So what I do, and what I want you to do, is get you advice. And I don't care if it's advice on a table, or it's a C-clamp, or it could be anything. Any kind of clamp, and clamp it down to a table. We have a vise, I'm going to use a vise. So, I'm going to stick it in the vise, and make sure that it's nice and tight. I don't want this piece of metal moving around. It's hard enough trying to keep the 4-inch grinder straight without that piece moving around too. So, let's get to cutting this piece of metal. Now a good thing for you to do at this point right now is to put a pair of safety glasses on and a pair of leather gloves. Because if this thing kicks out, it could nick your finger. I've seen so many people take these guards off and all it does is let it burn your hands, sparks fly more, and then you have a better chance of getting your finger up in there and getting it caught on that wheel. So, we have our mark where we want to cut and I'm going to try to zoom in and it's going to be hard for you guys to hear but we're going to do this so here is my line that I want to cut so when I start cutting I start at the bottom and all I'm going to do is kind of score that cut in there so it stays so let's get started here we're going to put our grinder right there at the bottom and we're going to go ahead and start cutting. We're just going to score that line first. Now what we've done is we put the mark on there where our cut's going to be. And what I like to do is just take my time just like I scored that mark and start cutting. If you go into this and you start pushing, all you're going to do is grind your wheel down. You don't want that. You want this wheel to last as long as you can. This wheel here was about $1.29. I can go through one of them cutting one piece of this if I push or damage it. So we're going to take our time and work our way through this piece of metal. Now when you first make that first cut, this thing wants to slide around because there's no slot for it to stay in. So now it should be fine and we'll work our way up and down like this. Okay, I just sped that up a little bit for you so you could see me cut that. Now the deeper I get in here, the more chances I've got of getting this blade twisted in there. So we got it pretty deep, it's almost all the way through. So what we'll do is we'll turn this over and cut the other side now. But as you've seen, what I did was I just worked it nice and slow. I didn't push, I let the grinder do its work and it cut it really nice. We didn't damage that blade a bit. This blade's gonna last a long time. So we're gonna get it flipped over Get it clamped up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on cutting just that little piece right there. We're gonna take our time and go right down through it. Uh, 
Okay, as you guys can see, this is an old bed rail. These are things I like to use, the angle iron, because they're cheap and most of the time free. Okay, now you can see the end of this thing has some pretty sharp burrs. It's got a bump right here on this side, and I just want to clean it up. So we're going to go ahead and set up the grinding wheel, and we're going to show you how to grind it off. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is make sure our plug is unplugged. So we're going to go ahead and push. Now that it's unplugged, we'll go ahead and push this button and twist it. And it went down in. You can feel this little thing go down in. Now we're going to flip it over. We're going to get our tool and we're going to have to twist that off, which that wasn't bad. Some people tighten these so tight that you can't get them off. Uh, they seem to tighten as they're as it's working. So We're gonna put a grinding wheel. So we're gonna take our Cutting wheel off throw it back in our pal over here. I'll get a new grinding wheel for you So we can show you how this goes back on don't forget remember we got these Pieces here. We want to get that slot down in there. So We're going to turn our grinder over Make sure that it's centered up on that bottom lip. And now this time, we're gonna put this lip down on. Now when we're doing cutoff wheel, we put it the other way. This goes down. When you put the grinding wheel on, this side goes down. So we're gonna stick it on there, push our little button in the back, and we're gonna go ahead and snug it up with our fingers. Now with that button depressed inside, make sure it locks. We're gonna go ahead, see there's two different sizes of this. This one takes the little bigger one. Or, another set of holes there. So we'll just go ahead and snug that up. Now I'm not gonna go crazy on tightening this up because I, I gotta take it off too. So now our grinder is ready to grind. So we'll go ahead and get it plugged in and we'll go over to the piece of metal. Okay, we're back at our metal now. I wanna take those little bit of burrs off of there and I wanna straighten this up just a little bit. So the only thing I'm gonna to do to straighten it up is we're gonna come up this side and we're just gonna grind that thing straight because there's just a bump on there. It's not that I need it off of there. For the video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, one thing you don't wanna do is get in a hurry with a grinding wheel. Grinding wheels are made to take off a small amount at a time. This thing is not a machine that will take off a whole bunch. You have to let the grinding wheel do its work. Let it do the work. You don't have to work hard. Just let it do it. So we're going to go ahead and straighten that up. I'll just turn it on and we're going to go up and down with it. That took that off so fast, it's unbelievable. Now, if you had a big, heavy, thick bead of weld on there, you still don't need to push hard on these grinders. Just let them just easily go through the metal. So I'm gonna take the burr off of this inside edge. We'll just go this way with it. I want to do the underneath of it. And if you notice, every time I'm grinding, the sparks are going away from me. And the way you twist this is how those sparks are going to go. Now, we're going to get some sparks and they're going to go right up past the camera, which I don't like because it always burns my lens. But we're going to do it. You've seen them sparks went that way, that direction. Now, if you're in a shop and you're uh, grinding a bunch of metal, you may want to see where your coworkers are because you can burn them with these sparks. You can get burnt with these sparks. That's why I always say do light grinding. The spark is not as big and it doesn't hurt as bad when it hits you. But that's grinding, cutting and grinding with the four inch, four and a half inch grinder. All right, that's just a little bit about the four and a half inch grinder. 
Um, listen, if you guys are wanting to work on metal, this is one of the first tools you need to get. This and a vise. You want to be able to clamp your metal down, your work down, and you want to be able to cut it. And if you take your time, you'll find out your wheels will last so much longer. I have wheels that are probably 15 years old because I've had them for that long. I don't use them. They don't wear out as fast if you take your time and do your cutting and your grinding. So if you guys like this video and you want to see more videos like this, leave it a comment in the uh, below down there and we'll see about getting you some more videos like this. Now I'll leave some links in the description down below for Amazon because I am an Amazon associate and I get a small commission. It doesn't affect what you pay, but it does help out the channel. So we'll leave some links down there for some wheels, maybe some grinders and stuff like that. If you'd like to look through them, I appreciate it. Uh, so I hope I helped somebody. I would like to tell everyone thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment if you'd like. Until next time.